or the quadratic function transformations. And transformation means that it just it shifts the um, the figure shifts. You can go right, left, up, down. It can actually get um, smaller or like um, narrower or wider. Hopefully, before these notes, you took the opportunity to do the Desmos marble slides that I had assigned to you beforehand because it was an investigation and a lot of this then hopefully makes sense on what you are investigating. Okay, so it was an investigation, what would happen, sorry my dogs, if you change either the H, the a, a K, sorry, or the A. So go ahead and rewrite this. Again, this is your vertex form. So you have Y equals A, X minus H, that's in parentheses squared, plus K. So remember with this format, your vertex form, your vertex is your H, the opposite of H, K. That is your, your vertex. Okay. Now, so here we have what we call a parent function, which we have a parabola Y equals X squared. It's the basic, the most basic equation you can have in your quadratic. You don't have a B term, you don't have a C term. Notice that it's zero, zero. So zero, zero is the vertex. If you have x is 0, y is going to be 0. Then, if you put in any number for x, negative 1 squared, it's going to be negative 1, it's going to be 1. Um, 1 squared, it's going to be 1 squared, which is going to be 1. So it's just the perfect, it's called a parent function. It's the most basic equation you can have for your quadratic. Well, we're going to use this parent function to compare it to other quadratics form or quadratic functions. The vertex is at 0, 0, and the width, now this a term here, which we don't have this here, but this really your A term right here is one, okay? So your A term is one. Now, here's what you guys were investigating, hopefully in, in marble slides. Well, this one you know. This one knows because of the A term. Now, if the A is greater than zero, the parabola opens up and it's no change, meaning it's just gonna open up. Now, here's the thing. When A is less than zero, you know it's gonna open down, but we call this if it opens down, we call it a reflection. Just like a reflection of a tree in a pond, like the tree is on the land, but the reflection in the pond makes it look like upside down or in there. So we call that a reflection. Now, here's what hopefully you were able to investigate in that Desmos, this B, C, and D, and we're gonna talk about all three of them. When the absolute value of A, this is the absolute value of A, when that is less than one, okay, that means the parabola is wider than y equals x squared, okay? So what it's doing, it's, it's, like, it's like stretching it out. Um, and it's, well, I shouldn't use that word because it's going to mess you up down here. I'm sorry. It's, it's going to, actually what it does, it makes it look shorter and fatter. That's what some students would say in, in the years past. This is called a vertical compression, and if that's what's happening. It looks like it's being compressed down, so when it's going to get wider. Now, if it equals to 1, well, there's no change, so that would be the problem is the equal width as y is x squared, and I'm going to recommend something here to see this a little bit better. But then when a, the absolute value of a is greater than 1, the parabola, parabola is narrow, it's narrower, but it's narrow than narrow, I should say probably narrower, than y equals x squared. That is called a vertical stretch. It, it's going to look as it's being stretched, like Stretch Armstrong. It's going to make it really tall. Okay. So then, you notice also in Desmos, the horizontal shift. When did the parabola shift left or right? Well, it shifted when you changed the h of the vertex. Okay, so when you change, tell how many units the vertex is shifted from zero, zero. So when you change the H of the vertex, remember your, it's HK is your vertex. When you change that, that's where it shifts. So in, in um, vertex form, when you change that H, that is called the horizontal shift. Now, if you notice, it got a little confusing. If you had like, x minus 2 squared, and then let's say plus 4, um, and let's say your a is 1. When it was a negative 2, you would think it would go left, 
but it actually went right. And the reason being is because it would take, if, if this was at negative two, if that was at negative two, it would take two places to get to the zero. So your horizontal shift is opposite of what this looks like. So it's negative two, that would shift two um, to the right. I have to always think about this because it's opposite. You would think two to the left because it's negative, but it's actually going to the right. Okay, vertical shift. Vertical shift is when it was going up and down, and hopefully you noticed that that's when you were changing the K letter or number. When you were changing the K, that was shifting that parabola up or down. Now, to tell how many units the vertical shift is from zero, zero, it's called a, a vertical shift. Okay. So if it was, let's say it's plus four. Well, it was it went up four. So these you say as the same. So if it's plus four, that means it went up. This got shifted up to here. The vertex gets shifted. And so that's what's happening is your vertex is being shifted, causing the whole thing to shift. Okay, so now let's see if we can kind of understand the narrow and the wider. Sometimes it's just visual that we'll have to, we can even use Desmos to type in your equation so you can see it a little bit better. Now, what is the order from widest to narrowest from the graphs of the function? So widest to narrowest, meaning um, we're going to want the, oh, sorry, my, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> They're playing in here. <laughs> okay, now we're all going to bust out in song here. <laughs> Everybody sing it. That is true. Tomorrow. Okay, so we have, okay, so the absolute value is less than one. Okay, so that right here. So when it's a fra fraction, so that one's going to be wide. This one's greater than one. It's going to be narrow. It's going to be stretched. And this one is going to be negative one. Oh, that's going to be negative one. So this is going to be it's the h of x first, then the f of x, and then the g of x. Now here's what I would do. I would go ahead and go on Desmos and type in these three equations. I think you should have an option that just goes uh, student.desmos.com and you should be able, or desmos.com, and you should be able just to hit start graphing. And if you wanna plot those three in three different lines, then you can see it. I wish I could just do that for you right now. Now, let's it, don't stress about too much of that. That'll come back. What is the transformation from the parent function? Now look here, we have y equals x squared, but plus five. Well, this is your K. This plus five is your K. So that means it's gonna go up five. So when you type in that equation, this parent function is gonna move up five and your vertex is gonna be there at the five, okay? All right, so let's try these. Now, so this is very similar to what we just did a little bit, and um, but we're gonna just sum it up a little bit more. H, so given the quadratic vertex, H is the horizontal. So just kind of remember that, that's kind of nice. H and horizontal. So the H value shifts it left or right. Now careful, the, if it's plus H, that shifts it left. If it's a negative H, it shifts it right. Meaning if it was a minus two, you'd shift two units to the right. K, this is the vertical shift. And then positive shifts up, the negative shifts down. Now that doesn't usually throw anybody off. It's just this horizontal one. Okay, now if A is negative, the function is reflected, meaning it's gonna be upside down. Okay, so it's reflected across the x-axis. It won't reflect over the y-axis because then that would not be a function. Remember the function you can only cross at one point so that is not a function but this is okay the x values can only re only be there once okay so if the absolute value of a is greater than one it represents a vertical so when it's greater than one it represents a vertical stretch it will stretch the shape out okay it makes it look really tall then if it's between zero and one it represents a vertical compression Okay, 
for the absolute value of that. So that's really what it should say on the other side with that fraction. But that's okay. Because I was like, you can't have an absolute value of a negative, but that's okay. Okay, so here, give the transformation given by the equation. So let's look at our equation. Notice there's no K, that's like plus zero. So this is our H. Our H, okay, now remember if we wanted our H and K, then our H is going to be opposite of that. So this is going to go left two, okay? Because in our vertex form, the H value is opposite of what this is saying. So our H value is negative two. So it's going to go left two. All right, this one, now we have an H and a K. So it's going to go left one down six. Because it's a negative six, that's going to go down. This is positive one, so that means it's going to go left one. Okay, so our ordered pair, our vertex, would be negative one, negative six. Okay, so our vertex is going to be there. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, now be careful. This A is negative, so that means it's going to be reflected. Okay, so it's going to be reflected. It's negative four here, that means it's going to go right four, and then it's going to go up one. So the H is four, the K is one. So it's going to go right four, up one, and it's reflected. This one, okay, now, not only do we have a negative, we also have a fraction. We, have, we don't have one like we had the rest of these. So this is going to have four things. So it's going to be, first of all, reflected, because that negative. It's going, now that's a half. If it's a half, it's going to be a compression meaning it's going to look like it shrunk and like that smashed down. So it's going to be a compression. Okay, so it's going to be a compression or it looks wider. So you can say that too, a compression or wider. The three, that's going to go right three and then down two. Now what I would do is if you want, go on Desmos type in this equation on one of your lines, keep it there, and then the other lines, type these in, and then you'll see the difference. And actually, if we have time, that would be a good thing for me to do um, when I'm teaching this unit. Okay, so number five. Now, here we're gonna do it different. Now we have, we give the, we have the transformation, and the parent function is y equals x squared, but we're gonna describe, or describe below, write the equation that represent it. So now we're gonna do backwards. We're going to write the equation that represents it. So just remember, it's y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So we're going to write it in vertex form. So translate two units to the right. The only thing that's going to go right or left is your h here. Now it's two units to the right. So that means y equals, we don't, we're just going to assume it's one here because it's not reflected or anything. And it's not compression. It doesn't say compression or, um, uh, compressed or what's the other one? Stretched. All right, so then we're going to have x. Now, this is where I always have to stop and think. If I'm going two units to the right, that means h equals 2. That means this has to be a minus 2 because it's opposite. When we write here, it's opposite of what we have here. So x minus 2 squared. That's it. All right, this one. Three units left, four units down. So three units left, so that means the h is 3. The K, no, left, that means it's in negative three. So K is gonna be four units down, negative four. So the, now for the H to be a negative three, that's gonna change this to Y plus three. No, oh, excuse me, what am I doing? Y equals X plus three squared minus four. Okay, so we're just going backwards here. All right, let's quickly do these two. Reflect over the X axis, we reflect it over the X axis, then translated three down. So reflected, that's gonna be a negative. Translated three down. Oh, so that just means, this is like, I don't think we need, we don't really need that parentheses there, but that's okay. Three down, it's gonna look like that. So really it's gonna look like this. Opposite of x squared minus three. Really either one would work. Because we don't have an h, you can put like plus zero. Now this one, vertically compressed by a factor of one third, then translated eight up. So one third, and then really up, that means it didn't go left or right at all. 
So that, which is technically this, that is U number four.